Cause some people are gonna think that I'm crazy But I don't care All that matters to me is Isaiah So the first day of my training is usually a leg day because this is when I have the most energy to give and I'm usually not as excited to train quads and so I go in on a Sunday evening and just get it over and done with. And so which brings me to the question, which workout should I start off? Should I start off with cardio and core? Should I start off, start off with upper body? That is all up to you and that all depends on what your goals are. What you need to pay attention to is that you want to make sure that you're not training the same muscle two days in a row because you want to give it about 24 to 48 hours of rest rest for the muscle to recover so you wouldn't do leg day today and then the next day again do a leg day you want to give time so after leg day i would then go on and do maybe an upper body or i'll go on and do a cardio day so i start off with a full warm-up and on my very first day of my training i do a full full warm-up like from start to finish like on the bike get on and do the stretches and all of that which i know you guys be skipping i know <laughs> you guys be skipping those but we do a full warm-up and as you you are going to see as i go throughout the week i do less of these and my warm-ups are now in my actual when i do the actual exercise because then i have my warm-up and then i go straight into my working sets which is usually two sets so i am on a four day split and the way that you figure out your split is you need to define what your goals are so you need to sit down and decide what are your goals when you're training are you trying to grow your upper body are you trying to define um your upper body muscles are you trying to um, grow your lower body do you want to focus on glutes? do you want to focus on legs I would always advise training full body. Even if your goal is to grow your glutes, train full body, still train your arms. Because I think a lot of people run away from training full body, especially with us ladies. We don't want to train full body because like, okay, I'm just trying to grow, grow my, grow, grow, grow <laughs> my butt. So I don't feel the need to train upper body, but it doesn't work that way, babe. You have to still be training upper body. And the reason for that for me would be that basically allows you to grow your overall physique because we've heard this a million times. You cannot spot reduced fat or you cannot spot gain. So you can't pick a body part and say, I'm just going to grow in my butt. It just doesn't work that way. And so all throughout my years of training, I have been training full body um, since I think three years ago when I finally learned what or how I had to train and also understanding that us running away from training upper body because we don't want to grow our upper body or we don't want to um, become bulky, that is not entirely possible because there's a certain level of training that you need to be doing to get to that point. And so for me, understanding that I'm not trying to grow my arm muscles, I'm not trying to grow my back to be huge you know i understand that okay my main goals are main, mainly to do with lower body and so my upper body day is going to be one day out of that training so i'm only going to touch on that muscle once or twice in that week and so you're going to notice with my split because i have a cardio and core day i also touch an upper body day then and then i also have an upper body day which is just for all my back my arms my triceps my biceps and all of that and so what split you're on depends on what your goals are you can be on a four day split you can be on a five day split but being on a four day split does not mean that you work less because what this means is that the way that you train is just different to someone who would have five days to give to their workouts and so this was my quads and glutes day, which is quite short but very intense and then we went on to day two which is my upper body the way that i train my lower body is a lot different to how i train my upper body because i understand my strength now that's another thing that i want to remind you that you need to pay attention to your strength how you feel when you do um, particular exercises and how you perform so when you do upper body exercises how is your upper body moving are you struggling through um, like simple movements such as push-ups are you struggling through planks and things like that that for me is always a signal to say if you are struggling through such workouts or th through such exercises that does not mean that you should run away from them so i should not train upper body because i feel weak when i train upper body but more so it speaks to i need to build my strength in my upper 
upper body because when you build strength in your upper body, it's going to allow for your performance when you do train lower body to be much, much better and just a better quality of, uh, of your workouts. And so what you want to do is you want to maintain a low to medium rep range. So that will be about four to 10 reps of each exercise and also maintaining short sets. So that's about three to four sets of each exercise and two to five minutes rest between each exercise. And so the difference being that with my lower body, because I'm trying to build mass and I'm trying to grow the muscle in size, I'm trying to grow my glutes, I'm trying to grow uh, my quads, my hamstrings, I'm going to put as much volume on them um, per week as well as I'm going to make sure that my training is structured for me to grow that muscle. And so I'm training close to failure for the most part as well as making sure that I'm lifting heavy enough. Whereas with my upper body, I'm not trying to grow any mass i'm not trying to grow those muscles what i'm trying to do is maintain as well as just build the strength on those muscles and so i'm doing my rib ranges are different to what they would look like for my lower body and so with the ladies when you're thinking i want to build that hourglass figure all of that kind of stuff you cannot build an hourglass figure if you're not training upper body it's just not going to happen you have to be training full body and it is wiser to be training full body because you cannot neglect muscle groups thinking that i'm trying to avoid this muscle group so that it doesn't grow because i don't need it to grow you have to train full body to be able to build your overall physique, which will give you the best looking shape that you could possibly get. I promise you. OK, and right after my upper body workout, I then go in to do two to three ab exercises that I include in there for about 30 seconds or 15 to 20 reps, because this is how I train my abs. Although I have a day when I do isolate them on my core and cardio day, I also like to train them in my upper body day. I think another conversation that we need to have is and a reminder that I want to give you guys because I think this is so important, like it is so important. I think when we see, um, you know, clips on Instagram, um, TikTok, wherever it is, sometimes your mind just goes into a place of you look at your body and you just, and this is for me, I'm saying for me, you just look at your body and you feel like, oh my God, like I still this day still think five years in training that I still look like the same girl that I was four or five years ago before I started training, the same girl that had no shape the same girl that had no butt no curves nothing just you know what I'm saying like I still have those thoughts and because I've worked this hard in all these years of training it is crazy to even think that like where's I'm thinking where has where's all the work that I've done over these years and so I want to remind you because I know that a lot of people struggle with this and not a lot of people admit this and I am here with like my back acne acne on my face all of it, like my pants rolling up, my sports bar rolling. If things are not looking aesthetic, nothing, sweat, all of it, all the good stuff. And I want you to remind you through this video that those things are so normal. And I think this is something that we already know, but sometimes we need, we need the reminder because we are exposed to different bodies every single day as you are exposed to my body right now. And sometimes we go through thoughts that have us thinking, maybe I sh why doesn't my body, why don't I have that much definition? Why don't I look? And I want you to draw inspiration from these videos and not feel like you need to beat down your body because it doesn't look like a certain way or whatever. And to allow your journey to be just that your journey and so upper body day i finished off with a um, cardio set, set because i'm obviously in my fat loss journey as i've mentioned if you haven't watched the video that i posted before this one that's where i explain everything so being that my goals have changed and now i'm now training for fat loss i finished off with cardio which i hate but it's gonna get done we then moved on to day three which is hamstrings glutes and calves this was my favorite day i was not feeling as well on this day i had a little bit of a headache but i did push push through which is something that i wouldn't encourage um yeah because i know how the internet likes to tussle I'm not encouraging you to work through work out when you are not feeling good. I like to listen to my body. And I knew that the reason why I was feeling that way was because of my energy levels. And so I know what to do to better my energy levels. So I started off with some calf raises. And going back to the point that I was making right before this, which is that you see the stretch marks, like you see the like all of it, like I want you to be exposed to that kind of stuff, to that reality, like expose yourself to that kind of content to know and remind your mind that seeing stretch marks on your body when you have been training for whatever and you've been trying to grow this muscle and suddenly it has stretch marks, of course it's going to have stretch marks because it's growing. And so that's not something to be ashamed of or something to feel as though, oh my God, why does my body, that's what a body is supposed to do. And so although there may be things that you can do to change these things or to fix them, whatever you want to do, normalize thinking of those things as normal, as part of the body, not as something that is, oh my God, why is this happening to me? And that will help you 
you, that'll better, better your relationship with how you feel when your body starts making changes. I'm not going to say that it takes away all the, the those feelings. It does not because till this day, I still also sometimes look at myself and I'm like, oh my God, why do I have this, all of that? But it betters it and it allows that the, the health, that you the conversation that you have going on in your mind to be a lot less hateful towards your own body. This workout showed me flames, as always. I don't think there's ever been a time, guys, when I've worked out with you guys and I haven't been shown flames, like, every single time. And this is another thing that I want to speak on, especially if you're on the 10-week program. I want to remind you that, girl, I need you to be training hard enough, babe. I need you to be training hard enough. It's It, it can't be like a uh, step in. If you are trying to build mass, by the way, if you're trying, if your goals are aligned to what my goals look like, I need you to be training hard enough. Hard enough does not mean that you're lifting heavy. You're the, lifting the 100 pounds in the gym. That's not what it means, okay? It just means that the way that you're training first of all it is smart and you're putting as much pressure and the challenge to your muscles to make them grow obviously we still have load shedding guys what's new what's new at this point not even shocked everyone's just moving on like nothing's happened <laughs> and it's just one of those things that you just get used to like okay cool um yeah there's that whenever load shedding happens by the way i literally always almost like i grab my camera because i have everything everywhere I have, like my phone over there for tiktok i have my camera over. i'm like girl grab all that stuff because you never know what people are capable of you know when the lights are off so yeah anyways um i want to remind you that you need to be training and challenging your muscles if you to the way that i would say like if you look at your training right now to say am i training hard enough if you notice that when you're training you're at ease and the only pain that you're feeling is just the pain of actually i just don't like being in the gym i hate it here so i'm just in pain because i don't want to be here but there's not actual pain that like there's no actual work or challenge that's being put to your muscles then you're not putting your muscles in the position of them being able to grow and so now you've got to decide, are you okay with that? Or do you want to change that? If you want to change that, then first of all, get on some sort of a plan, write some sort of a plan down of how you're going to train and where, how you're going to challenge your muscles. And when it comes to things like rep ranges, for example, like if the program says, like if I'm telling you in the program, I say, girl, this said we're doing eight to 10 reps and you do eight to 10, but you know, those eight to 10 was so relaxed. Like you could have gone for like 15 more. I need you to, to stop. <laughs> I need you to correct that. Because when we say, eight, for example, if I say 8 to 10 um, reps, those 8 to 10 reps are working reps. So those are, I start like to count, especially when it comes to training. I like to count when I actually start to feel that, okay, I'm now within the exercise. Now the muscles are, oh, baby, you, you feel the stinging. You feel the, okay, not the stinging, but you feel the pain in the muscles. Like, okay, she's, she's working now. Uh, she, she, she's breaking a sweat. That's when you know that, okay, cool, the work has begun. Now I can start counting my reps. But when the reps are still like, oh, it's slow. You can barely feel the weight moving. Like, it just feels like I'm doing something, but like, there's no struggle to it. I need you to reevaluate all of that, okay? I need you to look, take a look at that and decide I'm going to change from today on, okay? <laughs> so we went on to the last day. And I did a little check to say, okay, cool, the glutes are growing. We uh, have cardio and core on my very last day. Now, I think it's important to mention, first thing, guys, on this day, um, I was so tired. Like, my body was beat down. I felt it and I was like... um, I could leave, but I'm just going to see what I can do. I'm going to see how my body responds. And should I feel like, oh my God, it's not, I would leave because I know when I can listen to my body, I know what discipline looks like for my body. And so I pushed through and you're going to see, I made a couple of changes to my workouts to suit how my body was feeling at the time, which is another thing that I want to speak on to say, when you are training and you have a program, you have a plan, sometimes things don't go according to plan. As well as with my week of workouts, as you've seen this video, my weeks do not look like this every single week, like at all like i promise you like at all i have so many weeks where i miss a day or i miss one of the workouts because there's so much happening or i didn't train this i didn't train that i didn't add as much volume some days where i get into the gym and i say today is just not the day baby so i'm not even going heavy like on this day I tried to do my sprints, but I just was not giving the energy that I normally give to my sprints. And I said, it's not going to be, it's going to be pointless for me to try and give that same energy when I just don't have much to give. And so what I'm going to give is what I can give, which I then just decided to go for a jog and just keep it at that and just maintain um, a certain level of um, intensity, but not too intense, just to get myself in that place of, okay, I'm sweating, I'm getting my heart rate up and all of that, but I'm not trying to push myself to the point of death. Do you get me? So your workouts are not going to look the same all the time. 
your energy levels are not going to look the same all the time, as, especially as your goals change. Like, for example, I'm now in a fat loss journey. My energy levels are so much different to how they were before. Because beforehand, when I was trying to build muscle, I was eating a lot more carbs. And so I had a lot more energy. And as you can see, I was doing jogs and this was what my face looks like. Um, and this is all the sunscreen that I was wearing. I, I love the sunscreen, but girl, she'd be making me look purple. And I, I need to change the sunscreen because it's not giving. But this was all the sweat from just toning down my workout. And then going into the core segment of our workout, guys, abs are a muscle. They are a muscle just like your hamstrings, just like your glutes, just like your quads. And for them to be able to grow, you need to train them. And so by training them, you grow the muscle. However, if you have belly fat over your abs, you will not see the abs, no matter how many ab exercises that you do. So although it is important to do ab exercises, for you to get rid of that belly fat, is it needs to happen in the kitchen. It needs to happen with the nutrition. You need to reduce your overall body fat by being in a deficit so that you can remove Move that fat so that you can be able to see your abs and that's how you're going to be able to see um the ab definitions and all of that but however you're not going to be able to see those abs just by doing tons and hundreds and hundreds of ab exercises as long as you do not lose that belly fat you're not going to be able to see your abs and i want you to also remember that a lot of this is to do with your nutrition it has your nutrition plays a huge role when it comes to what your midsection looks like and so you want to fix up your nutrition you want to make sure that if you're trying to get rid of belly fat you have to be in some sort of deficit even if it's a small deficit so that you can reduce your body fat and see get to see um those ab muscles so this is your reminder to train abs and fix up your nutrition and that brings me to the end of the video i hope you guys enjoyed this video please don't forget to subscribe if you're new here and thank you so much for watching Mwah. Oh